In today's video, part 13 of our F1 23 My Team Career Mode here in Season 2, we head to, for, to the Brazil for the Brazilian Grand Prix, two DRS zones and an incredible middle sector. Do we have what it takes to go for the win again? If you do remember, last time out in Mexico, we did secure the Drivers' World Championship with a fifth place finish on the last lap after a very late safety car but we despite it, it being over for the drivers championship it's still all to play for in the constructors and this q3 lap is incredibly important piastri in fifth signs in eighth in the ferrari so um he i think i believe signs is the sole ferrari here in the top 10 i might be wrong about that i probably am but Either way, it's incredibly important qualifying here in Brazil to get this lap right. However, we will be starting 10 places further back, which shows how even more important it is to get this lap correct because we are taking a grid penalty for a new component part. And we will be starting in P. 11 i believe if we are on pole position as things stand though it'll be p17 so this lap better count green in the middle first sector purple in the middle sector six tenths gained up to the line we go it's a 108237 and that's going to be enough to put us onto the front row for the sprint tomorrow so still we can gain uh from the sprint and minute maximize the points on saturday and minimize damage done on Sunday from our low starting position. But it's Max Verstappen on pole position for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc in P3. I was completely wrong about that, about Sainz being the sole Ferrari. Because Leclerc is in third, Norris fourth, Russell fifth, Piastri sixth, Alonso seventh, Sainz eighth, Stroll ninth, and Perez in tenth. In terms of for the strategy, for the sprint, it's pretty obvious, softs all the way. But for Max Verstappen and Red Bull, Red Bull always go on mediums for the Brazil sprints, and I don't know why. It's never worked for them, and it's going to cost them again here because everyone behind us, except Norris, is on the soft tyres, and he is going to get overtaken, is Max Verstappen, incredibly quickly. We're going to try and get him before, immediately after the lights go out. So be interesting to see how Verstappen's tyres fare towards the end of the race when they might become the better tyres. So we go to five red lights for the sprint here in Sao Paulo. It's lights out and away we go. We do get the start we need and immediately we take the lead from Max Verstappen into turn one in the sprint. Eight laps of in this sprint. And now Verstappen's probably going to be under pressure from Le Charles Leclerc, who is under pressure from George Russell. As, we tell, as our engineer tells us, so we've got... MG UK issues, which means we're going to have to lower our ARS deployment road as Max Verstappen tries to re-overtake us for the lead. We're going to try and hold it around the outside and on the soft tyres, we do keep the position. But despite taking new components, we still have wear on our engine. Hopefully it doesn't hinder us too much, but we might have to take even more penalties for the race on Sunday. But we lead at the moment in the today on Saturday. And that is very crucial if we... So we could be forced to retire if um, if this MG UK does not uh, behave well. That's what Mark says anyway. Hopefully it doesn't behave well at all. And for that, we're going to have to lower our ERS deployment mode. But I don't want to let go of this race win that easily. I believe it can last for the rest of this sprint. I hope it can last. So we set the fastest lap of the race, a 1.15.315, and we're already seven tenths ahead of Max Verstappen as we start lap two. Verstappen, if he doesn't have the DRS on us, is going to start to come under a bit of pressure. And now lap three, Verstappen has managed to hang with us. We have been struggling a bit as we lose the back end. Oh, we have to go onto the grass. That's going to cost us a lot of places. Alonso overtakes us. Piaggio overtakes us. As we spin again, oh no. Oh, two mistakes back to back. See us drop right to the rear of the field. As we come back on, we're in P21. The safety car's out due to our spin. Oh dear. 
And we're now right at the back of the field from P1. And we've got a 10 place grid penalty. So we're going to have to do incredibly well as the safety car is now in on lap 5. We're going to have three more laps to the end of this, this sprint as we go racing again. And Liam Lawson, we're going to try and ca catch him off guard immediately as we head towards turn 1. We go down the inside of him and Joe Guan Yu as well but Lawson sends it on Joe us and Hulkenberg is he about to get a triple overtake we overtake Joe but Lawson no just the double overtake for him just the double poor from him really <laughs> but now we are going to overtake Liam Lawson after Cena Del Arga and up into P20 but still we have a lot of ground to make up to get back to where we were it's crucial we do it quickly as we go down the inside of Nico Hulkenberg. We're not messing around today. And we are now up into P19 with Daniel Ricciardo in the Alpha Tauri here in P18 ahead of us. We're going to have to make this overtake quick and maybe into turn one if we could set up a good move. But no, actually, Nico Hulkenberg's thinking about a move on us because we get an awful exit. But now, lap seven, we are going to go down the inside of Daniel Ricciardo and up into P18. Daniel Ricciardo goes for the switchback, to be fair. And we almost lose it again. We get a bit of oversteer. But this time we do keep control of it. And now this is lap 8. We could not overtake Magnussen. It, we, it was just too much for us on these soft tyres. George Russell wins the Sao Paulo sprint for the, for, two year, for the second time in three years. And we come home in P18. Not, not ideal. Not ideal from our perspective. Considering we started P2 and we led until lap 3. But it was a simple mistake and we've got to iron those out. It's a good thing we are already champion, I guess. But either way, I believe Max Verstappen is finished P3. So he did drop down the order. And when I click A, hopefully very soon. There we go. You know, Verstappen P2, sorry. Leclerc P3. Fernando Alonso P4, Piastri P5, and we are down in P18. <sighs> Not much to be said about that race. The less said, probably the better. And the Ferrari closed the gap on us in, in the constructors to only 61 points. So it's still all to play for then. And... 102 points is now the gap between us and George Russell in the championship. But as you know, that's already done and dusted. So let's head to the main event, the race on Sunday, where we are going to be taking a 22 place grid penalty because we're going to take new components of everything because we might as well because we are, we could, we'd be starting in the back either way. The strategy, soft, medium, but like usual, we're going to switch up because... Otherwise, it's incredibly boring. And we're going to go to a medium soft, which should be probably better towards the end of the race. The majority are on the soft, though, ahead of us, except Log Logan Sargent in the Aston Martin and us in the RTG sport car on the mediums and a couple front runners on the hard tyres. As we start the formation lap, it's been an incredibly long time since we last had to wait this long for a formation lap but either way we can now as we start it important to get our tires heated up before the start of the race as we go a bit wide shows they're cold as we go to five red lights for the brazilian grand prix the main race here on sunday it's lights out and away we go it's a good start for us actually I th it was actually a, a kind of a mid start of the start but we're going to go down the inside of as many cars as possible about four or five and in one corner we're going to go on sergeant and drogovic maybe as well no not drogovic um bottas now we're going to go around the outside of felipe drogovic no not quite but in one corner we're up from p22 to p14 so seven places gained and now can we go for the move round the outside of felipe drogovic no drogovic defends well on his soft tyres. But there's loads of action up ahead. With I believe Yuki Tsunoda. And Esteban Ocon going for it. As now can we go down the inside of Felipe Djokovic? Yes we can. Can we go down to the side of Yuki Tsunoda as well? He leaves us the space. But 
we get a bit of a snap of oversteer in that corner again. We don't seem to like that corner. And Djokovic comes back at us. But we are going to keep the position and go and stay down the inside and go back down the inside of Yuki Sonoda. That one was a lot easier to move. And in one lap, we've gone. We've gained 10, 10 places from P22 20, tw all the way up into P12. So a brilliant start for us. And now lap three, our first chance to go overtake Esteban Ockham. We're going to try to go round the outside of the Frenchman. Now down the inside, get the inside line for the next corner. And now round the outside for the center S's. And round the outside of Ockham we go. We get the DRS as well, just off Sergio Perez. And Ockham is going to come back at us, actually, as is Yuki Sonoda. Ocon, is he going to re-overtake us? No, we just hold it round the outside and we keep the position. P11 and one place outside the points in P10, which Sergio Perez is 1.6 seconds up the road and is being held up massively by Lando Norris on the hard tyres. Or is it Alexander Albon actually in P7? There's now Sergio Perez. Can we maybe think about a little overtake here? He goes a bit wider than everyone else, taking a different line, or he's beginning to struggle with his soft tyres. As we're going to go down the inside, of Perez and up into P10. And there we go. What a move. In, under the D He had DRS as well. So that was only ERS. But now Lando Norris on the hard tyres. And Carlos Sainz on the softs. Can we maybe go for a move? And Lando Norris has not got a good exit. Out of the, turn four, I believe. And we go down the inside into Cena Delga. And up into P9. And now Carlos Sainz is the next man on our list. To be overtaken. And... Now we're going to give him one more lap. We've just been following him. And he overtakes Alexander Albon. Goes down the inside of him and up into P7. And now what can we do? Albon looking quite easy. Look quite, quite vulnerable to overtake. We're going to get slipstream from signs. We're going to get the DRS. And we're going to break a lot later than Albon. And go up into P8. And that is a crucial move for us because Sainz has already been escaping as has Lance Stroll. But Sainz is now caught up to Stroll and we're going to do exactly the same as what we did with Alexander Albon. Sainz, we're going to let Sainz overtake him. We're going to take a nice line and try and overtake Stroll as well. As Stroll gets a bit of a snap of oversteer. And now we're going to go round the outside of him in the centre S's. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Another incredible move by us and up into P7. Carlos signs in P6, but what a move round the outside there on Lance Stroll. He just got a bit of oversteer. And now, lap 11, everyone else is pitting. Signs and us have stayed out because we're on harder tyres that can go for longer. And I see my chance to overtake the Ferrari of Carlos Signs with DRS. And lots of ERS used as well. We've got a better launch, better exit. And we gain on signs. We gain on signs. We're going to go to the outside of Carlos Sainz. We're going to overtake signs. No, signs breaks so late and defends. But because he's on the inside, he's not got a very good exit. We've got much better traction off of that corner. And now we gain. We gain. We're going to go round the outside into Cena de Laga and up into P3. But we still have to pit. So it's technically not, not legitimate just, let, just yet. And lap 13... We do come into the pits on to go onto the soft compound tyres. So we've got to go 12 laps or 11 laps after lap when we come out. And Sainz is, might be quite a bit ahead of us. Sainz did pit earlier than us. He pitted the lap we overtook him. We waited a bit to pit. As we come out the pit lane, Lando Norris is quite a bit ahead of us. I don't know. That undercut's been massive from him. And now... Can we uh, hold P8 ahead of Sergio Perez? He's coming out the pit lane. We're coming out the pit lane. Perez, we are ahead of him, but only by 0.5 of a second. So that was a crucial pit stop. Crucial good timing from the team. And now we are 2.5 seconds behind Lando Norris. And we on these soft tyres, we need to catch up to him as quickly as we can. He's right up there, up the road. And there's a yellow flag. Now, lap 18, there's a safety car. There's a safety car. I'm not sure. Sainz seems to be out. It's Carlos Sainz out the race. And maybe his engine's gone or something. He stopped on the track. He's, I think he might be parked to one side. But there is a safety car here in this Brazilian Grand Prix. Another late safety car. So, late drama once again as we prepare to go racing here in Brazil, I lost the pack a bit towards the end. I wasn't really concentrating. So we do get a good launch, but I thought it was quite unfair 
to overtake because of that. As now... Piastri is in currently in, is currently in P3, so a podium for Piastri at the moment, which would be excellent. It's now Lando Norris up ahead. We gain on Lando with ERS, but nothing doing. But now, can we go down the inside of Norris? Yes, we can. Into turn seven and up into P6, but we go very deep. Our tyres are a bit struggling now because we did go on them incredibly early, but we do make a bit of contact with Norris, actually, but we are up into P6. And now maybe we can set our sights on Fernando Alonso or just staying in the DRS. Both me and Piastri seem to be struggling. Verstappen all over the back of Piastri. And now the last lap of the race. Verstappen still behind Piastri. Hopefully Piastri can hold on to that podium. That'll be huge. But we need to worry about Norris overtaking us because he's done it. Norris has overtaken us but he gets another snap. And we're going to do exactly what we did to him earlier and what we did to Sainz. But round the outside we go into Cena de Lago. We're going to hold it round the outside of Norris. We go incredibly wide. No, Norris defends and does incredibly well. But we're going to now send it down the inside of Carlos Sainz. Get another snap of overstay. And Piastri also has been overtaken by Verstappen. So that's our hopes of a podium gone. But P6 for us it seems unless there's going to be a photo finish at the line. Which there is quite often in Brazil, as we come round the final couple corners, Lando Norris will have DRS, we will have DRS, George Russell, for the second time in three years, wins the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, it's his third win I believe in Formula 1, and P P Norris fights us to the line, and he got us, oh no, oh dear, Lando Norris overtakes us at the line, and Perez as well, right on our gearbox a couple more meters and we could have got it mark congratulating us because apparently we're now world champion but we were world champion already russell though completes the double in the sprint and the race we come home for p7 overall on the weekend with seven points piastri picks up 12 in the race which is a very solid points all from him but it's a solid recovery drive from us from p22 up into p seven we are right behind um lando norris 0 0.06 seconds 0 0.06 0 0.05 seconds incredibly close between us and lando perez also sniffing about there in terms of standings 84 points is now the gap to russell so he's certainly putting in some performances if there were one more race i reckon russell still could be on for the championship but that is not to be so we are still t mathematically impossible to catch unless we get a point deduction which doesn't happen on this game ferrari close the gap to us in the constructors by one point i believe as we head back to the team and that's it for this episode guys i'll see you guys next time for my favorite circuit to drive on the formula one calendar it's a real shame it's not on the real f1 calendar anymore because i love it so much yes it's portimao the portuguese grand prix make sure to stay tuned for that by liking the video subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys next time goodbye